Sublime Text allows you to execute arbitrary external programs and displays their output for you in a panel at the bottom of the window, but what it doesn't do is allow you to interact with those programs. Now, there's a few different ways around this. Commonly, a person might use the Terminus package, which implements a terminal directly inside of Sublime, but sometimes you have the need to run your program in an external window, but from Sublime Text. And we commonly get asked, is it possible to do something like this? And the answer to that question is yes. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do it. Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here. Welcome to this week's video where we're going to be covering a method for executing a Sublime Text build system inside of an external command prompt window. Now we'll know that when you execute a build system in Sublime Text, you can execute any old program that you want and Sublime will capture the output of that program while it's running and display it in a terminal at the bottom of the window. And uh, that's great for uh, most purposes, but if you need to interact with that program, then this doesn't work because Sublime will show you the output of a program, but it doesn't connect the what you type into the panel into the input of said program. And in that case, you have to take some sort of other action. One way around that would be to open a shell window or terminal window or command prompt window, whichever terminology you use for that, which would be uh, a side of Sublime Text. You use Sublime to do your editing, and when it's time to run your program, you switch to that window and run it there, and then switch back to Sublime. Uh, a lot of people do that. Some people find it a little disjointed to be swapping from Sublime and out to another uh, window and then back again. And for those people, we would generally recommend something like the Terminus package, uh, which is free, fully cross-platform, and can be used in a Sublime Text build system to make that build interactive so you can uh, type into it because it just adds a terminal directly to a Sublime window. And it also has the benefit of allowing you to display output not only in a panel at the bottom of the window, but also in a side-by-side -side view if you want to see your code on the left and your program running on the right. But there are cases where you might want to run your program in an external command prompt window, but you don't want to have to swap to it manually. And what we'd like to do is have Sublime create that window for us, run the program in it, and then when we close the window, we go back to Sublime Text. And that is the topic of today's video. Now, we're not going to cover build systems in this uh, video. We're going to assume you already know that. If you're unfamiliar with build systems and how they work, there's a playlist that's linked down below this video uh, that will tell you everything you need to know about build systems and how they work. And and uh, if that information on Terminus intrigued you and you're not familiar with that, there's a video linked down below where we discuss how to take any build system you have and swap it for using Terminus if you'd like to use that. So we're going to proceed here with instructions for how you might set up a build system to open a command prompt window for you uh, to be able to execute your program in there. And this is going to be, uh, in this video, specific to Windows only. If you're using Linux or Mac OS, a similar concept can be used, but the command that you to do so will be different. We're only going to be covering Windows in this video. So if you'd like to see uh, how you do something like this on Linux or on macOS, let me know down in the comment section below this video. But with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into the example. For our example here, I've prepared this very simplistic uh, build system, which is the most minimal build system that one could imagine. It just has a command to execute, and it doesn't have any of the other things you'd normally have in here. Now, this is a small build system, so you can see exactly what change you would need to make in order to get your build system to do what we're going to be doing here. This example here is using a command that's built into the uh, command prompt in Windows, so this will work for absolutely anybody who wants to try it, and you can use uh, what the con is contained in this video to modify your command as appropriate. Now, if we were to run this build, what we'll see is a directory listing of my packages folder down there in the panel at the bottom of the window, which is exactly what we might expect to see. Now, something to note here is that the directory that it wants to list is inside of my home directory because this is a portable installation of Sublime that I use, and this path has spaces in it. And that's why up here inside of the shell command, the uh, packages variable that expands out to that path has these slash quotes around it. The string has to be uh, put inside of double quotes uh, to let the command prompt know that it represents one single argument because normally command processors like this, be they command, uh, which is what Windows uses, or your bash shell on Linux or Mac OS or other environments like that, use spaces in the command line to assume that's where the next argument begins. So when there's a file name with a space or any argument that needs a space in its value, you need to wrap it inside of double quotes. That's just a little uh, bonus tip for you. Now this works, but what if we wanted to execute execute this inside of an external command prompt window. 
Well, there's actually a couple of different ways that we could do this depending on how we want it to work. And it all involves uh, modifying this shell command to do something a little bit differently. Now, for a very quick background, this is kind of covered in the video series I mentioned on build systems that's linked down below in the description. When you use shell command inside of a build system like this, what's actually happening is Sublime is passing this command off to the command prompt of Windows and asking it, this string right here, please execute this as if someone typed it. So this is literally doing what would happen if I was to type this command manually inside of a command prompt. And for that reason, anything that we execute inside of this shell command, if we wanted to open a brand new window, has to be something that would open a new window if you were to type it inside of a command prompt because obviously the dir command would just display the directory inside of the command prompt that we were already in, right? And the way you do that is with the start command in Windows which asks it to start uh, a new program and the program we wanted to start is the command processor and we're going to provide an argument of slash k like this to tell it that the next thing that happens, uh, the next string here is going to be the command that we would like it to execute. And in order to do that, we're going to take this whole thing, which is the command we wanted to execute, the get the directory listing of this folder, wrap it inside of double quotes, and then we need to modify these variables just like we did before uh, to be able to tell the JSON that this is um, uh, double quotes that are special to this command. Otherwise, it'll think the string was ending. And we could see that there when the syntax highlighting didn't work. And now when I run the build, what pops up is this command prompt window. And it's showing me the directory listing just like it was before. And the command prompt has remained here. I'm, I'm at this point in the window. I could type other commands here if I wanted to, or I could go ahead and close the window. And we can see that because Sublime executed this build, it's still displaying this panel as well. So that works. And this is a great way to do this, to run some sort of external program if you wanted to run it and then still be able to interact with it afterwards. For example, if you were running Python and you wanted it to execute a script and then go interactive so you could query it or something along those lines. Now, let's say that you actually wanted it to run the program and then close the window for you automatically when you're done. Well, that is a very simple change because the uh, command uh, command, uh, for lack of a better term here, takes two different types of arguments, slash k tells it to run this command and then hang around when you're done, and slash c tells it to run this command and then quit. And as a matter of fact, command slash c and then some string is exactly what Sublime Text is doing behind the scenes when you use a standard shell command. So when I do this, we might expect to see the command prompt with the uh, when the directory listing in it, and we'll see, and I'm not sure if this will capture in the video, that it appears and then just immediately vanishes away. And uh, we can see the panel here, it definitely ran, but what actually happened here? What happened here is we asked it to display the contents of this and then go away, and it did, and on a fast computer, it can do that in like a fraction of a second. So this is still handy in some cases if you were running an external program uh, that was interactive, for example, and part of the interaction of your program was telling it to quit, then as soon as you ex executed that quit command from inside of the thing, then the window would go away on you and life would be good. We saw an example of that when I did uh, start command slash K and it opened in the window and then I typed exit to go away. Now, if we actually wanted it to go away regardless, that's very easy to do, we can just add ampersand pause in here like this. Now note, this is inside of the string that represents the actual command being executed, and adding an and uh, allows you to execute multiple commands one after the other. And when you use this and like this, first one command executes and then the next command executes. So this is going to run the dir command and then it's going to execute a built-in command in Windows called pause, which waits for you to press a key before it continues. And once that's done, the entire command that we have specified here uh, will be finished and the command prompt will go away. And now when the build, we see the window right here, we see it prompting us, press any key to continue. And when I press a key, Oop, the command goes away. So if that's something that you would like to do here, then you can do that as well. Now, 
Another thing that you might see here, and this is very common for programming languages like C and C++, where in order to run a program, you need to compile it first and then run the executable. You need to do first the compile, and then you need to execute the thing that you compiled, right? Now, you could do that with an ampersand like we're seeing here. However, uh, a problem with that is that if your compile fails, then the program will still run because this runs first one thing and then then another thing, regardless of whether anything succeeded or failed. And you'll find yourself being mind-bogglingly confused uh, when you type some code and it doesn't compile cleanly, and then it still runs. It's really running the last time you got it to work. And no matter what you do, your program doesn't seem to change, and it's very weird. But that's very easy to fix because there's another way to do something like that, and that is two ampersands like this. And we might say echo done like this. Now, what we're doing is two different things here. We're saying run the directory uh, command on packages and then execute done and then execute pause. And because there's two ampersands here, this is code for run this second thing, but only if the first one succeeded. So if I was to run the build like this, we can see the directory output the way we've always seen it, and we can see it say done down there because that's the echo done, and then we see press any key to continue. And this works because the directory command worked. It was able to show us the contents of the directory that we asked it for, so that worked, so then done still executed. I'm going to go ahead and press a key to close that window. If we were to modify this to, say, be a directory that definitely does not exist on my system, now we're asking the directory command to execute a directory of something that doesn't exist. And in this case, when we run the build, what we just see is the system cannot find the path specified. That's the dir command executing and uh, telling you that you asked it to create a directory listing for something that doesn't exist. We don't see the done because the directory didn't exist. So the dir command failed, but because we used a single ampersand, it still waits for any key and allows us to continue. So whether you want to have your window open and stay open or only open until you hit a key, or even if you wanted to do that and execute multiple commands, all of those are very easy to do with this very simple recipe. Whether you want to execute an external program in a command prompt window and have that window close as soon as the program is done or hang around for you to be able to uh, interact with it in any way you choose, both of those are very easy to do using this simple recipe. Now here in this video, we were just using the dir command, but you could apply this same formula to any command that you'd like to execute inside of a shell command. Just use start command and then slash K to have the window hang around, slash C to have it not hang around. And remember that whatever argument you pass after that needs to be the full command line as you would enter it inside of your command prompt window and use it in double quotes using these slashes in front of them because it is JSON in order to tell the uh, command prompt what it should actually run. Now, as I said, this is only going to work on Windows. A similar formula is also available for Linux and Mac OS as well, but we're not covering that here. If you'd like to see something like that, let me know by dropping that down in the comment section below. And you can also throw any questions, comments, or requests for clarifications down there as well, or suggestions for other Sublime Text topics. And uh, remember to use those buttons down below to thumb subscribe and share as you deem appropriate as we head out of this video and into next week with our next video on Plugin 101. So until then, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.